Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In this video, what I'd like to do is to demystify a very important yet technical and abstract algebraic gadget called cohomology, or sometimes called homology. This is a gadget that occurs all over mathematics, uh, so it's used quite a lot, and yet it's quite difficult for students to understand. So our setup today consists of three vector spaces, V0, V1, and V2, and we have two linear maps between them, D0 and D1. And we look at the special situation where the composition is zero. That means if we do D0 and then D1, the composite is zero. Now today, just for simplicity, we'll look at vector spaces, but you can also consider more generally the case where these Vs are just abelian groups and the maps D0 and D1 are additive maps. So you may not have seen this condition D1, D0 equals zero before, so let's study it a little bit. So let's see what this means. If we do D0, that sends V0 to its image. And if when we apply D1 to that, we get zero. That means D1 of this image is equal to zero. What's another way of stating this? Well, what's the set of all vectors such that D1 sends it to zero? That's just the kernel of D1. And so the image of D0 has to be contained inside that kernel. Image of D0 is contained inside there. And that leads to the definition of the first cohomology of this sequence, V star, often called a complex because it satisfies this equation here. This first cohomology denoted H1 V star is just the kernel of D1, this subspace of V1 there, modulo this subspace image of D0, which we know is contained inside kernel of D1. Okay, so you may think, well, that's a rather strange looking gadget. How do these arise in nature or in mathematics? Well, it turns out that they kind of crop up everywhere. And one way to say why that's the case is the following. Suppose you want to solve some homogeneous linear equation. Suppose the linear equation is given by the linear map D1 of V1 to V2. So solving the homogeneous linear equation just means you want to compute the kernel of D1. Okay, let's be a little bit more concrete. And the example that I want to give you comes from differential geometry. Let U, a subset of R2, be an open Z. And the vector spaces and the map we want to consider is the curl map. So you can take a smooth vector field on U. The space of all of them I denote by C infinity U of 2. Take its curl to get a smooth function on U. So basically a vector field is given by FG like that. And the curl you might remember is given by this formula. DG dx minus DF dy. And of course, this is a very natural question, right, to compute the kernel of this map. You're just looking at all the curl-free vector fields. Okay, so that's the first linear map, D1. What about D0? Well, suppose now, in trying to solve this problem, you know that there are some obvious solutions floating around. Okay, and suppose those obvious solutions are given by the image of some other linear map. So the solutions live inside V1, and so we're looking at the image of some linear map D0 from V0 to V1. Okay, so let's look at a simple example of this. Let's go back to this example here, where D1 was this curl map. The D0 map, I'm going to make the gradient. The gradient sends a smooth function to a vector field. And one of the things that we know is that an easy way to get a curl-free vector field is to look at the gradient of a scalar potential function f. That's always curl-free. 
So here we have a lot of solutions to this homogeneous linear equation here. If you want a curl-free vector field, a cheap way to get one is to just look at the gradient of f for any scalar potential function f, which just means any smooth function f in this case. Okay, so what's h1 v star? So remember we defined it to be the kernel of d1, which is the space of homogeneous solutions to the problem we're looking at, modular the image of d0. And what was image of d0? Our interpretation of that was this is the space of some obvious set of solutions. So the set of solutions modular the space of obvious solutions. Of course, that means that you can interpret H1 now as the space of non-obvious solutions. So let's see what this first cohomology looks like in the special case of our example here, where you use the linear maps, the curl and the gradient. So what's a non-obvious solution? In other words, a curl-free vector field, which is not the gradient of a scalar potential function. Well, hopefully you saw this in your multivariable calculus class. The classic example is this vector field here. Minus y on x squared plus y squared as the x coordinate and x on x squared plus y squared as the y coordinate. So note, very importantly, that this is not defined at 0, 0. But it is smooth everywhere else. So it is defined on this open subset U. Now it's quite easy to calculate the curl of this and to show that it equals zero. To show that it's not the gradient of a scalar potential function though, is a little bit more difficult and uses a little bit of theory. So how do we do that? Well, we use the following fact. What we're gonna do is we're going to look at a curve inside here, which goes around the point that's been removed from R2. In this case, we can just pick the unit circle C. Now, if you have a gradient of a scalar potential function, then the integral around this curve has to be zero. Now, let's look here. This vector is actually perpendicular to the vector xy, which is your input vector. So if you work out what it looks like, it looks like this on C. It goes around the circle, essentially in the same direction. But if you integrate this, you'll get something which is non-zero. And hence, it's not in the image of the gradient function. In fact, you can say more. In fact, if you look at this integration as a function which sends curl-free vector fields, the kernel of this curl, to the real number, which is that integral, then this is actually surjective, and the kernel of this is precisely the image of this gradient function. So what does that tell us? That gives us a complete description of this first cohomology in this case. The first isomorphism theorem tells you that h1 v star, which is the domain modulo the kernel of this map, is isomorphic to the image, which is all of the reals. So that comes to the second interpretation for this h1 v star. And this is the one which you can use almost everywhere. This is the stere stereotypical way of thinking about h1. Elements of h1 v star are just obstructions to lifting. So do, what do we mean by that? Suppose we have something which is in this kernel here, so a curl-free vector field. Can we lift this to be the gradient of a scalar potential function? Can we find that? Can we lift that? Well, what's the obstruction to lifting in this case? It's whether this integral vanishes or not. If this integral vanishes, then by what we've said here, it's zero in here, so it's in the image of that gradient map. So when the corresponding obstruction inside H1 V star vanishes, then you can lift to the image of that D0. 
And to a certain extent, this measures how you might fail from lifting. I hope this video helps demystify the notion of cohomology for you. To see more adventures in pure mathematics, you can see my website.